In this video, I'm going to compare two methods of reversing a string in Python. I saw these methods on Chirag Fisher's blog at the URL shown here, and Chirag agreed to let us create this video comparing the performance of the two methods. The first method uses the extended slice syntax. As Chirag explains in his post, the syntax is string open square bracket begin colon end colon step close square bracket where begin and end are the begin and end positions of the substring that you want to get. By leaving begin and end off you get the entire string back and by setting the step to negative one you traverse the string from right to left which gives you the reverse of the entire string. The second method uses a recursive function. The best way to understand this function is through an example. Let's say we pass it the string message M-E-S-S-A-G-E. -E. Since the length of message is not less than or equal to 1, the function returns this, which is the whole string minus the first character passed again to the reverse function, followed by the first character. The next time through the function, only S-A-G-E e -S -S -E gets passed, and it returns S-S-A-G-E, -E, passed through the function again, followed by E. This continues to happen until the text passed to the function has a length of 1, at which point it returns the completely reversed text to the original call. So let's take a look to see which of these methods performs better. We will use the time module to measure the time it takes for each of these methods to run. The message we'll use is just hello world. We'll take a look at extended slice first. We set time.time .time to start time, then run the code, and then after the code is run, we get time.time .time again and subtract the start time from that to get the time it took to run. We assign that value to extended slice time. The second method uses the reverse function. So we first define that function. We set the start time after defining the function. We don't really care how long it takes to define the function, as we only have to do that once. Again, we set time.time .time to start time. We then pass our message to the reverse function. And then after that's run, we get the time again and subtract the start time from it and assign that value to function time. We then just print the results. They both run lightning fast, 0.0, .0 seconds for both of them. But we used a really short string. Let's repeat that string 50 times and try again. This time, you can see the extended slice method still takes no time at all, but the recursive function does take a little time. That tells us we should probably go with the extended slice method. Let's make the string even longer, repeating it a hundred times. This time, we get an error. It turns out Python doesn't like all that recursion. So the takeaway is that we should use the built-in extended slice method to reverse strings. It's easy to write, and the performance is terrific. Thanks, Shrog, for providing the idea for this video. You can see more of Shrog's blog posts at testing-qna.blogspot.com. Take care.